So the Octarius box arrived some time ago and I finally got around to assembling some Terranian units. Since the new Kill Team 21 edition is here, let's start things off by working on some dead core of Krieg. The point system is gone and if you want to assemble a Kill Team, now you'll have to pick models from a predefined booster found in your Octarius book or compendium if you're not running Kriegsmen or Orcs. A veteran guardsman kill team is composed of a single big fire team that includes 10 veterans and one ancillary support option. However, while building your guardsmen you might notice that you can't pick all the specialist options and you're forced to make some choices. Or are you? Well, technically yes, but I want to show you how you can make the most of your kill team by fielding 10 specialists and no regular veterans. In this video, I want to go over my choices of what specialists to build and the assembly process of those specialists and the way I painted them. So let's get started going through the order presented in the assembly map. First things first, we have the sergeant veteran who can give out orders to the other guardsmen and for his loadout, I've picked the plasma pistol and power weapon. This way he'll pack a punch in both melee and range combat. Built following the instructions. Number 2. I would have loved to have the sniper crouched, but we're going to have to build this one as a demolition veteran for the mines, but we'll also build the sniper later on. Number 3 is going to be a spotter veteran for the mortar barrage and the spotter ability that might prove useful. Uh, worry not, we'll also get the medic down the line. Number 4 is going to be the first one we're changing. A gunner veteran with a flamer is good and all, but I don't think our enemies would stack up to make it worth it, so we're building him as a gunner veteran with the plasma. Using the bits from instructions 6, C variant. For reference, those parts are A85, A45, A73 and A75. Number 5 is going to be our medic veteran to heal up some of the wounds we'll get. Number 6 is going to be our comms veteran, useful for relaying orders. Number 7 is going to be a zealot veteran, the emperor protects. Number 8 is going to be where things get weird. We're going to build him as a gunner veteran with a melta. And I think the bayonet is enough for our guardsmen and I don't want any more melee focused ones, so no bruiser. There is only one problem here, there isn't another A73 hand to use, so we'll have to make do with a B33 where I cut off the hand from the gun. I keep patching the hand to make it look okay, and since I'm using plastic glue, I coat the entire area to melt the plastic and give it more cohesive look. While this is not ideal, the end A73 hand is also shared with the Confidant Veteran and you can definitely avoid all the hassle by building a gunner veteran with a flamer if you're not set on the melt. Number 9 is going to be our sniper veteran, so we just use the hands from instructions 2B variant. For reference, these are the bits A49 and A50. And finally, number 10 this is going to be another veteran gunner, this time with a grenade launcher. We don't need any regular guardsmen here, so this one's going to use the hands from instructions 7D variant. And for reference, those are parts A78, A43 and A100. This means that the only specialists we haven't built are the Confidant Veteran, the Bruiser Veteran and the Hardened Veteran, uh, and the Flame of as well. But this looks like a solid team and should you want to run more Trooper Veterans, you can get 4 from the Trooper Veterans Ancillary Support, should you have the models for it of course. Otherwise the other tactical assets look great and you can pick two that would best suit you. So talking a bit about the models that I haven't picked. The Confidant Veteran can replace the Sergeant with the second in command ability, but I really don't plan on losing my leader or putting him in dangerous situations. He'll mostly stay in the back and I can use other more useful models instead. Also, he's a bit weaker since he can pick a plasma pistol and power weapon as a loadout. The Flamer veteran sadly did not make the cut. Well, he has an easy to hit attack with a 2 plus compared to a 4 plus for the Melta, and he also has considerably less damage 2 normal, 2 critical versus 6 normal, 6 critical. And 
since both they have both the same range and the Melta has armor penetration, it feels like this would be the better choice. The Bruiser Veteran has a small bonus to melee fighting with his passive, allowing him to ignore damage from one hit and has a slightly better melee choice with their trench club. But since everyone already has bayonets, I don't see him as having a big of an impact on him. And finally the Hardened Veteran. This one is slightly better than a regular one and because of his bionic arm and slight chance he might get wounded, having the Medic Veteran allows you to heal other units of your team, so I'm not worried about taking a wound. So this was my train of thought when I was assembling my kill team and now let's move on to painting. I primed the models with Abaddon Black and since these are proud veterans I want to paint them in a red gold color scheme, starting with the base of corn red on all the overcoats. Once this is done, for all 10 of the Merry Men, I move on to the pants with Mechanicus Standard Grey. I want to color block all the areas since I'm going to use a shade to wash the whole model at once. Next, I base the bed rolls and the foot wraps with two thin coats of Xandri Dust. Now that's done, I cover all the leather parts with Rhinox Hide. The gas masks with Wraith Bone. And the metallic parts are based with Rough Iron. These are the Emperor's Finests and they don't get camo colors and standard issue equipment. Only the best become veterans and these guys get to show it. Once that's done, I base all the gun stocks with dried bark and then move on to use Rockheart Flesh on the documents, uplifting primers and medical bags. I then move on to shade all the miniatures with Agrax Earthshade everywhere except for the metal parts which are getting a coat of non oil. Next up, I dry brush lead belcher and retributor armor on different areas of the metal parts to distinguish them better. With the metallics done, I move on to the red coats, lifting the contrast with a coat of corn red. Red mixed with squig orange. Followed by a highlight of pure squig orange. I pick out some details on the leather sections with Mournfern Brown and the pants with storm vermin fur. For the gas mask lenses, I use Warpstone Glow as a base and then cover it all up with Waystone Green. The only two things left now are the plasma glow effects and the bases, so let's take care of the plasma. 
I simply base the coils with Wraith Bone and then add a touch of Drakenhof Nightshade, letting the shade flow into the coils. Before I texture the base, I first use a dry brush to stipple a few brown colors on the lower hanging parts of the coats and pants just below the knee, each color touching less and less of the model. For this I use Gortor Brown, Doombull Brown and Dried Bark. As a texture, I use Sterland Mud and cover the entire base, making sure the feet get dirty. Once it's dry, I cover the entire thing with a dry brush of Dumbo Brown. Slap on a graph tuft and that's the veteran all done. I also finally got around to printing a turntable to better showcase the miniatures and here it is in action. And here's the whole squad hanging out. I have a few more kill team builds in mind and some battle reports to go with them, so stay tuned. If you have a particular kill team you'd like to see covered, let me know in the comment section below. Next, we'll be tackling the Heretic Astartes before moving on to the Orc Commandos and the Terrain of Octarius. Anyway, don't forget to subscribe and let me know what you thought of this new format that includes assembly as well, and hopefully we'll get to work on as many kill teams as possible. Until then, take care and see ya!